everyone welcome back to another interstellar ksp tutorial we are going to be of course doing our interstellar mod tutorial list if you would like to see all the other tutorials that i am in the progress of working or maybe finish depending on whenever you get to see this video take a look in the description there are the lists so of course today we're going to be discussing reactors the wonderful things that produce a crap load of heat and supposedly give you power so what do you do or what the hell is the point of these things and what the hell are they useful for so let's start off with the basic thing what can you use these things for why the hell do i have reactors what the hell do i do with them well simple reactors of course the main reason with the interstellar mod is that you can power up huge you can say power plants that send off beam off the electricity into outer space or all over your planet itself and can power up your electric uh, electric-powered uh, refineries or electric-powered planes using the plasma reactor, so on and so forth. So that's one of the main reasons why the reactors are in the mod as well. And of course, there are many other things. You need, of course, a lot of power in your science lab to produce antimatter, which is a completely different tutorial. You need a crap load of power to actually mine all the sort of resources with the refineries that you get with this mod as well and of course you can use these reactors to just supply you power on board so you don't have a crap load of batteries or solar panels on board you know so that pretty much is the usefulness or the need of what you use these reactors for oh yeah and of course don't forget the heat because reactors produce heat all reactors produce a shitload of heat these are nuclear reactors of course they can also power thermal engines so in case you are interested as well in using those so that being said that out of the way you have an idea of what you can use all these things for the second thing is so, okay so what is the difference between all of these reactors i really put all of them there so the general rule of thumb is is the moment you place a reactor you are going to get in the actual uh let's take a look at that you're you're going to realize that in the vab or whatever the hell you are you're going to get an actual grid that uh starts the 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 uh, thermal heat thingy here you go the interstellar mechanic helper this thing pops up the moment you place a reactor now again the general rule of thumb is is if it's red it's bad a lot of heat you can't disperse the heat get rid of the heat fast enough it's going to blow up and all costs cause all sorts of damage so the most uh, easiest solution to resolve that of course is to place radiators now you have many many types of radiators for some reason i can't find them when i need them you have here you got you got the circle radiators for your actual airplanes in case you want to use them you got the side you got the huge radiator panels you got the fixed one of course if you right click it you can see that it can actually uh, uh, dissipate 200 uh, 21,272 megawatts of heat it can get rid of it so yeah that that's pretty cool and of course uh, i do believe i might be wrong its performance increases in regards to the altitude is that correct i might be wrong in regards to that but generally the the radiator of course dissipates heat if they're attracted they don't dissipate as much heat of course if they're extended they dissipate more heat but generally they do dissipate heat even if they're attracted because the surface area is smaller it dissipates less heat so all reactors produce a shitload of heat you need you do need radiators of course the small ones as well do work this is pretty much the general rule of thumb so that being said let's jump back and back we are again i did forget to mention when you are placing the the radiators the whole point is you got to keep placing them until you get the numbers in yellow or in green i might have mentioned it i'm not sure so now back to the radiators you have many many types the general rule of thumb is the smaller the radiator the less heat it makes which means you're going to get less power but we'll get to that in a bit and the bigger the, the the reactor not the radiator the bigger the reactor the more power or the more heat and there's no power the more heat it actually generates so i stuck on top of all these uh, reactors nuclear reactors electric uh, generators now the electric generators convert the heat from the uh, reactors so if you stick an electric generator it actually converts all the heat into electric energy so if i right click for example let's take a look at the small one if i right click on my generator it says it can give me a maximum power of 11.78 megawatts and it's taking the heat from here now the general rule of thumb is again there is this is why you need the radiators the heat all reactors produce a lot of heat inside a lot a lot of heat if you stick on a generator the heat transfers to the generator and then the generator produces heat but the transfer of course comes with penalty not all the hundred percent of heat moves to the generator it never happens you always have something lost and unfortunately speaking you see efficiency is only 39 percent for example for this one 
this one has efficiency of 85%. So if I take a look at how much I'm producing, I'm producing here, let's take a look at this one, this, for example, this one's much easier to explain. We have nine gigawatts of power and efficiency is only 54.5. So 54.5 from nine equals 4.9 gigawatts. So now my generator is only producing 4.9 gigawatts because only 54.5% of actual heat is going to the generator. And where is the rest going? The rest is going into the actual ship itself. As you see, my thermal temperature is actually going down because I have enough or they're not even switched on yet. Yeah. But generally speaking, the rest of the heat is still building up. If you don't have enough uh, radiators, the heat keeps building up. So that's that's why you do need radiators. So, but I have enough seems to be that I have enough surface area for it to radiate. So it's going down the power heat. Yeah. So this is the the general principle. So if we take a look at the small ones, for example, the uh, I do believe the gecko. This is what type of yeah the gecko fusion reactor in regards to the Seethlands. It's a little bit smaller though, but look at the amount of power this is giving me 11.78 megawatts and this is giving me 2.27 megawatts. So it's giving me a hell of a lot less power with the same actual uh, electric generator. So obviously the Gecko fusion reactor is good. So why the hell would you need a small one? The small one, of course, you can stick on a small little, I don't know, uh, scouting rover that you're going to have. And of course, the rover wheels are all electrical, so you don't need to carry a lot of power stuff. And even though this is heavy, don't forget these are very heavy. It does resolve in some way. In some way, it is infinite electricity, though it does finish, but after a very long time. Now, again, you see this one is giving me 4.9 gigawatts of power. But if I take a look at the same size, this one is giving me 9.75 gigawatts of power because the uh, what the hell is the name of the damn thing? The fusion reactor is much better than the fission reactor in terms of how much power it gives me so i get much more power 9.75 gigawatts of power now just to give you a general idea one of the refineries requires 40 gigawatts of power so you need a lot of power to make that thing mine so just just keep that in mind okay now if of course the antimatter is uh, the top the creme de la creme as high as you can go if you actually get enough antimatter into this baby you can actually get 242 gigawatts of power from your antimatter reactor and then you have something a little bit in between you have the in antimatter initiated reactor you need antimatter and helium 3 to initiate this reactor and then when you get it done you get 30 gigawatts so again it's a little bit better than the fusion reactor but uh, a little bit worse than the antimatter reactor. It's a huge jump. And then the Akula, it's terrible. It's uh, only giving you 2.95 gigawatts. This is, again, the basic tutorial. There is, of course, a reason why such a large one is giving this much. Uh, again, a little bit of a disadvantage, a little bit of advantages in terms of that. But uh, long story short, the fuel might last longer in some of the reactors that give less power but uh, in relation to time it still is so long that you really don't care but again this is the beginner's tutorial so forget about that this is just the general principle they produce heat you need enough uh, surface area to radiate it if you can radiate it all is good and if you stick on a generator you can actually produce electricity now there's two things to keep in mind as well just in case you were asking if the electric generator is smaller than the fusion reactor it's fine you fully power it but in case it's the opposite way around it completely doesn't work so here you have a little bit smaller one and here you have this and as you see it completely doesn't work only 541 megawatts not even gigawatts so make sure that your reactor is at least the same size of the electric generator you place on it and if not i don't know why you would do that but whatever happens make sure you at least place a smaller electric generator on your reactor to make sure you get the most out of it because if the electric generator is bigger than your reactor then it really just doesn't work so that's pretty much it. These things can run on for a very, very, very long time before you have to refuel them and reprocess them and all that other stuff. But that is a more advanced one. I hope you guys learned quite a little bit in terms of how your reactors work, why you need them, what you should use them for, and uh, how exactly the combinations work and what is the shittiest one, that being these ones. And it slowly gets better and better and better and better until you get to the supreme antimatter reactor. Of course, the antimatter is very hard to collect, but that is a completely different thing. So as always, happy gaming, take care, and see you around.